The point is that our founders did not want us to forget. And if a nation that does not forget God, righteousness exalteth the nation. But sin is a reproach to any people. When the righteous are in authority, that's why I'm here to help Steve Stockman. Only one reason. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. When the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. And so our founders want us to understand. Now, let me, let me just go, go back for a moment. The condition at this point, we can sometimes get frightened because we see what folks are doing. On the day that Barack Obama became president of the United States, our national debt as a percentage of gross domestic product was 41%. That is 41% of the production of all the goods in the country. Let us say that your daughter buys a home and she owns a home and has a $100,000 home and she owes 41,000 on it. And then she marries a new guy and he comes in and he says, well, let's just buy everything. And so he runs about 20,000 in the hole. So the next year they refinance the house and it goes to 60,000 on the $100,000 home. And he does the same thing again. The next year, 80,000. And finally, the third year, he's at 100,000. In America, in the year 2012, at re-election time, in the spring of 2012, the United States of America, the debt is 100% of gross domestic product. Now, there's only three nations in Europe that are worse than that. The worst is Greece. Greece is 120% of GDP, and at 120% of, of gross domestic product, people won't loan them any more money. Now, we don't know when that applies to America. We don't know where it is, but it need not even be a question, because had we stayed on the course that we were when Steve Stockman was congressman, had we stayed there, our, gross, our debt would be 5% of GDP, not 100. And so now we're at, at a point in which we're about to come apart, and who knows what's going to happen. And when that happens, when people no longer purchase our debt, then everything changes and the whole world determines, just like the banker says to them, tough, you owe us the money, we're going to foreclose on your house. We're going to take your house. Well, what they're going to say is that we're going to demand 3% interest on these loans that you're given for half, half a percent. We're going to demand 5%. In America, if America paid the same interest rate today on its national debt that it paid 10 years ago, that would be an additional $600 billion. That, that is, it would blow, the, we're, you, we're talking about saving two or three billion here or there. It would take 600 billion just for the bonds at average rates. We have made ourselves vulnerable for a reason because the people in Washington at the current time have chosen to make America vulnerable. That's why we need Steve Stockman in Congress, because without people that understand as he does, then our nation is in trouble. Can it be fixed? If you do the wrong thing, you can take the greatest nation on earth and make it crumpled. In 2009, Barack Obama was sworn in as the president of the world's only superpower, a term nobody even uses today. Why? Because they're fearful of whether or not they can pay their bills. If you do the wrong thing, you can take a great country and run to the rocks. But the corollary of that is this. If you do the right thing, you can correct it. And that's why we have to have the right kind of leadership. Concluding is this. John Adams said, we have no government with a power capable of contentions for human passions unbridled by morality and religion. There has to be a standard. Our Constitution was made for a moral and a religious people. It is wholly inadequate to the government of any other. George Washington, of all the habits and dispositions which political prosperity, religion, and morality are indispensable supports. How do you have a successful country? Religion and morality. Now, does that mean that, that a, a pastor has to be involved? A country cannot survive without religion and morality. And those pastors, primarily under age 40 or so, that boast about the fact that they're walking away from the street corner and they're not going to get involved, we will give account to this lighthouse for the gospel. 85 cents out of every dollar that goes for the cost of global evangelism comes from this lighthouse for the gospel. This nation has been lovingly transferred into our hands. If we drop it, we will then give account for it. Concluding will be this. Reason and experience both forbid us to expect that national morality can exist in exclusion of political morality. And so, with that, why are we here? We are here because nothing is inevitable. Nothing, as, George Wash as, as Ronald Reagan said, it's not written that we're going to be free and prosperous. It's not written that we're going to be enslaved and in poverty. Every generation has to make that decision for itself. We've skirted with that. We have a generation that doesn't understand why. We have many people that are in places of spiritual leadership. They do not understand the correlation. 
They understand that if you listen to a counselor that doesn't have scriptural values, that you can't put a marriage back together without, without godly principles. You can't put a nation back together without godly principles. So we need to understand what they are. Then we need to get actively involved because the scripture says that the Lord turns the heart of the king. Who's the king in America? You and I are. We determine it. We're the ones in charge. What America becomes is our fault. We can't just be like the children of Israel and point to some sovereign somewhere. You and I make that decision on a daily basis. The best thing that we can do for our country and for our children and for our future is to make sure that Steve Stockman is in the Congress of the United States. Thank you. God bless.